this cluster has several problems going on. So what will happen is the driver's information center will just light up on its own with the key off. So I got a clip where one night I was out smoking a cig, something caught the corner of my eye, and lo and behold, it was the driver's information center just turned on by itself. Now this truck does have some aftermarket modifications, particularly a remote start on it. If there was a problem where something was turning on the ignition zero circuit, I believe, the whole cluster would have turned on. It would not have been just the driver's information center. That's pretty much the first clue that, you know, something's going on with the cluster itself. Now, the second thing that's going on with the cluster, what'll happen is you're riding down the road, even if you're like this with an odometer on, all of a sudden, it'll start scrolling the different languages. It'll switch to, it usually does French, and it'll be stuck in French. And when that happens, none of the buttons for the driver's information center work. The, the biggest problem though is every once in a while, and I mean really, really intermittently, what'll happen is you'll start the truck and the cluster will not turn on. And it'll basically be shut off indefinitely. The only way to fix that is to pull the IPC or DIC fuse out of the underhood fuse block. Now the big thing here, I've never been able to capture this to where I can get it on camera. The last time it happened, I think it was Christmas. We had the Tahoe all packed up to go visit family for the holidays started the truck no cluster and we really didn't have time to mess with it i just pulled out the ipc fuse put it back in it reset the cluster so i pulled out the ipc fuse reset the cluster we went on about our business for a couple months and that seems to be what it is like once every couple months this thing will act up i've tried to catch it so that we have a dead cluster and we can go ahead with the appropriate troubleshooting procedures but it's not going to happen. As much as I hate to do it, we're going to have to do the power and ground test pretending that it's not working. Now, I hate pretending on stuff, but I feel as long as I tell you guys that we're pretending, then it's okay to pretend because we're all on the same page as far as what's really going on with this thing. Now, if I just went out here and pulled out the IPC fuse and didn't tell you guys that I did it, we did the troubleshooting steps and I fucking worked the camera to make it look like everything was cool, but we had a dead cluster, that would be fake pretending. It's almost like when someone says that they have better tools than you do and these tools just happen to be locked up in a magical trailer somewhere. Daddy? That's fake pretending. Yeah. That's what suckers do. You know what I'm saying? So to wrap it up, we're doing good pretending because I'm being honest with you guys. This, this cluster really is not acting up. I'm just going to put the parking brake on so we don't crash. I'm going to go ahead and drop the steering wheel down all the way. I'm going to sh shift this thing into one. And then I'm just going to come over here and start prying this piece out. Fucked up thing is I moved this truck around this morning and it did it. And of course now it's going to be a perfect gentleman. So behind that bezel right there, you're going to find four 7mm screws. We're going to go ahead and take them out. So what I did was I finagled the cluster, got it turned around so we can access this connector right here. In the event that the cluster was totally dead, which it's not, we could wiggle these wires right here to see if we had a loose connection or whatever. Now I'm going to leave this connector plugged in while I do this test. If you remember, like I said before, when the cluster was dead, all I had to do was pull out the IPC fuse and put it back in and the cluster would work. Well, same thing here. If I unplug this connector and plug it back in, the cluster will work. So if the cluster was dead, I want to leave this thing plugged in and test the circuits. So with our cluster connector still plugged in, on our bottom row right here, at the very end is the black wire with the white stripe. That's our ground. I'm just going to take my T-pin. Now I want to touch the orange wire. Since the truck is running, 13.4 is acceptable. Now we're going to touch the pink wire. Well, you got 
punch the pink wire. And again, we're at battery voltage. Now with the key off, we don't have any voltage on the pink wire. We have no voltage until we turn the key on. If we go to the orange wire, well, we have yeah. battery volts. So, if we were going to pretend that the cluster wasn't working right now, and we did those tests right there, and we've got ground on the black wire with the white stripe, we've got power on the orange wire and power on the pink wire with the key on, then more than likely we have a bad cluster. We have something wrong inside the cluster. Now this is cool doing voltage tests here at the connector for the cluster, but considering this is a very expensive thing to replace, we can go one step further and just be sure that our power and ground circuits to the cluster are okay. And to do that, we're gonna test the circuits with our super test light. So we're just gonna go ahead and unplug this connector. Hey Daddy. Are you just checking me? What? Are you just... So I've got my super awesome jumper leads hooked up to the battery. I've got the positive off of my jumper, jumped over to one side of my super test light. Coming off the other side of the super test light, I have a T-pin. I'm going to go into that black wire with the white stripe. Super test light comes on nice and bright, which means that circuit can easily do four, five, six amps. Now I've got one side of my super test light grounded. Go ahead and take my T-pin. We're gonna go into where the orange wire was. Loads down fine. Go ahead and turn the key on. Because our pink wire is only gonna have power with the key on. And our super test light lights up nice and bright. So now we know that at the cluster connector that the constant power, the switch power, and the ground for the cluster, all those circuits are okay. All right, so now we're gonna do the bench test on this cluster here, just to show you guys that you only need those three circuits for that cluster to turn on. So what I've got here is a aftermarket connector that's gonna plug right in the back of the cluster. And these three wires are gonna be the ones that we tested in the truck. Now they're different colors in this connector. That's why I got all this shit written down right here. All right, so I got my jumper hooked up, battery positive and negative. Just gonna hang out right here. Then take my connector, plug it in the cluster. And I've already marked these three wires of which ones we need. So the orange is gonna be ground, purple's the constant B plus, white with black stripe is the switched. We can just twist these two together since they're both B+. So I'm going to go on this ground wire. Put this one on orange. Like I said, those three are the only three you need for that thing to turn on. Now one of the things I forgot to say when I was filming this and putting it together was the bench test would also verify that there wasn't another problem with the truck that's causing the cluster not to turn on. Although it's very rare, there is a small chance that it could be something else that's causing the cluster not to turn on. So if the cluster wasn't working, you tested the voltage and the current at the connector and it still wasn't working, and then you did this and it fired up on the test bench, there might be something going on, and that's out of the scope of this video. Well, I didn't catch it on camera, but the driver's information center message changed on its own. That was one of the problems we were having. So right now, this white wire with the black stripe represents the key. So key on. So key on. Cluster fires up. Key off. On. Off. On. Off. 
and really this points to a problem with the cluster itself. So we're gonna go ahead and put a new cluster in this thing. Fifteen eleven, forty six, forty nine. This reman fifteen eleven, forty six, forty nine. So, should be good to go. It kind of sucks I couldn't catch mine doing the whole language sweep and the DIC all out of control. But what are you gonna do? Wow, we did use a power tool to pull these screws out. We yes. need a little bit more finesse putting them back in. You want a what? I like coffees. Coffee? Yeah, no, coffee. So some cluster fun facts, at least for this era, Tahoe, Silverado, Suburban, it fits a lot of different uh, GM trucks and SUVs from this era. Um, what's the matter? I forget where I was going with it. We'll have to do the cluster fun facts later because it is just way too fucking hot out here. Well that's better. It's not as stupid hot as it was out when I put this cluster in. Here we are about three months, I guess 3,000 miles later. So yeah, three months, 3,000 miles later, there hasn't been a single incident with this cluster, meaning no language changes, no DIC turning on in the middle of the night, and even though it's very intermittent, we still haven't had it where the cluster just did not turn it on. So I'm considering this thing fixed. Now when it comes to replacing the cluster in these trucks, there are a couple options available. I could have just gone to the Chevy dealer and ordered a new cluster. And that would have been big bucks, way out of the budget. You know, I'm not spending five or 600 bucks on an instrument cluster, it's ridiculous. Another option would be to go used. Now I just took this picture off of eBay last night. Take a look at some of these prices on used clusters. I can't see spending two, 300 bucks on something that's 13 years old, has double the mileage that mine has, considering how failure prone that they are. You know, who's to say that one of these doesn't have an intermittent problem where it just won't turn on sometimes? Who the fuck knows? The other thing with a used cluster is, say I bought this cluster right here with whatever, 192,000 miles or whatever the fuck it was. If I put that cluster in this Tahoe, that cluster is gonna report that this Tahoe has 192,000 miles on it. The mileage that the cluster remembers stays with the cluster. It doesn't know that it went into another vehicle. Now, if you go on eBay for Tahoe clusters, you might see some of these rebuilding services. Now. I reached out to a couple companies and the people that I spoke to did not have the confidence that they could successfully repair my cluster with the problems that it was having. I didn't want to take this cluster out and send it to some random fuckface who might sit on it for a couple weeks and then just say, hey, I can't figure it out, send it back. And that's not really going to get me anywhere. Now, the last option and the option that I went with was getting a refurbished cluster. Refurbished means a company gets a used cluster, they overhaul it and build it to their specifications, whatever they may be, slap on a decent warranty with it, and that's the one I got. Now when I ordered this thing, gave them my VIN number, gave them the mileage on the truck, and the cluster that they shipped me was just plug and play. Had the correct mileage on it, I didn't have to do anything but plug it in and roll. Let's just look at these options at the price point, you know what I mean? You got a new one going around 500 bucks, 
a used 13 year old cluster on eBay, just say average 220 and a refurb right around 300 bucks. These are not like my Chevy Trailblazer where I could get a used cluster for that thing for 50 bucks and swap it in, no big deal. I mean, this is some serious fucking cash, at least in my opinion. This is why the power and ground test as well as the bench test is so important. Cause look at them prices. It's basically, if we didn't do any of these tests, we'd be looking at a two, three, five hundred dollar gamble. And you know you guys know me, I don't play that shit. Let's just say that somebody's cluster was dead and they watched a video and the power and ground test and the bench test, it's over their head and they're like, well fuck my O3, I'm just gonna throw a cluster in it. And let's just say they even get a used one on eBay, the cheapest of them. They put 220 in it and they, they plug it in and it doesn't work. Had they done the voltage test or the test with the super test light, they would have seen that one or more of the circuits weren't doing what they were supposed to do and it really would have helped them not spend the 220 fucking dollars. That's what the whole point of this video was. Anyway, now you guys know how to load down your power and ground circuits to the instrument cluster on the Chevy Tahoe. That might also work with the Silverado, Suburban, Yukon, Sierra, them kind of variants. Even the Escalade, I think, has the same pinout for the cluster. So if you had a dead cluster, you can do your power and ground voltage test. You can load those circuits down. You can bench test that cluster and see if it's in the cluster itself or the vehicle wiring. So anyway, thanks for watching. I got more videos coming. Just hang in there. You know what I'm saying? And um, if you like what you see, subscribe. If you don't like it, I don't give a fuck. And um, I'm just going to keep doing more shit. So see y'all.